for those of you who have a 6th gen Camaro know that unless you have like a Z01, typically your knee pads are going to be plastic, they're not going to be upholstered. You can order leather or Alcantara fabric around this stuff. Um, if you want to buy them after the fact, usually this is going to set you back 300 bucks. I figured I have enough leather and stuff here that I could try it on my own. So I first uh, folded back some leather and then like sewed it together and did this. Tried that on for size but wasn't too happy with it. Um, contoured pretty nice. However, I saw from pictures that the actual GM ones they really have is an inward and outward curve sewn together, something like this. I tried my hand at it. I did pretty good, except for right here where it bunched up. I could try it again and get it spot on, but I'm thinking that's probably more effort than I want to devote to this right now. And ultimately, like, I just want to do this in Alcantara. I have a roll of Alcantara that I can use, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to contact cement this entire surface and then drape Alcantara on it and fold it over. That should be plenty fine. I actually don't have any black string on me right now or gray that would match my interior, so not having stitching is actually probably a good thing. I don't want red stitching that's gonna clash with my SS1 LE interior. All right, so part one is I wanna unroll my Alcantara fabric and leave just enough overlap on either end to be able to do this. I got the nice Alcantara with the backing. You don't really need it for this, but it's technically better for a high wear area, so I went with that. I would say probably about this much. It's good enough to fold over. I don't want to use too much. Like, as you can imagine, this stuff is not cheap. And I don't want to waste it. Kind of want to cut around there. Should give me plenty of material to get this done. Maybe even enough to do both of these things if I'm careful in how I distribute it. Mine was uh, just a guide. Scissors will always cut much straighter, especially because there's lines on this that you can follow. <laughs> okay. Start with this guy since I've already uh, mocked it up somewhat. I want to be able to have enough material to fold over and not have too much drama. So I want to be probably around here. Let's see. So, taking a regular pen, kind of give myself a reference for where I'm going to be. material like around there but I'm not going to cut anything just yet. The reason I drew this out is so I can lay contact cement on this and on this. Put contact cement on two surfaces you'll have a much better bond. And of course it's going to smell horrible in here so I'm going to turn on the fan. Contact cement is probably not the best thing to be breathing. If you can do this in a wide open area I recommend that. You want to shake this stuff first, believe it or not, there's a solvent and a binder in this and so you want to shake it or else you'll take the thin stuff first and be left with just the thick stuff on the bottom and it hardens and dries out. And this backing definitely absorbs quite a bit. I hope it's not getting through to the other side. It doesn't look like it. 
Okay, so that takes some work to get that to play well. So spread it quick. So you want to kind of seal the surface a little bit with this so it's not so absorbent and then it has like a you know way to grip the plastic. Okay. Go ahead and uh, paint the plastic with this stuff. Get much more mileage out of it on the plastic. It's not absorbent. Spreading it as much as I can while it's nice and liquidy. So I don't have to use too much of it. I don't want to waste it. Right now, contact cement isn't actually cheap either. Definitely going to start buying the stuff in a big gallon bucket though because I do enough upholstery work that it's now justifiable. Let that tack up for a bit. Close this thing back up. All right. You can wave this back and forth. The air will help to tack it. Or put it under the fan. Out. Might use headliner spray for this, but I'm not a big fan of headliner spray because I find that it bubbles a lot. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this over. Got some wrinkling here which we can kill by making some relief cuts. But more on that later. I want to have a little bit of leftover material to fold over here, but not too much. Probably about that. So, more or less give myself a guide. Let's cut that there. All right, then obviously we want to cut out for these seams here I like a little As a matter of fact I will leave a little bit of material to tuck into this Really quickly, I'm gonna take a look at what the factory ones look like. Just give me some reference. All right, so we'll cut that, then I kind of want something like that there. Some of 
this excess fabric here. So let's work on these. I feel like professional upholsterers must be high on contacts in that half day. I find this stuff annoying, but it is one of those chemical smells that like somebody would like, you know, like people that love the smell of gasoline. Although, I don't think that's a thing anymore. Definitely old school gasoline, maybe. Now the uh, ethanol makes stuff smells a little different. knows maybe someone likes it but it's one of those chemical smells that like it's not offensive you actually it's strong and it's bad for you but people will tend to smell it and kind of like it I'm sure there's plenty of upholsters that do and uh, you know perpetually strung out on this stuff so here when I fold these corners I'm gonna need relief all right so Start cutting a little bit of relief in right now. So real quick, let's do this one. All right work on the others as we go along. Do this seam, this seam, and this. Looks like here's a little clip, so gotta provide some kind of removal of material here. Give me that, and we'll work on the corner. So let's work on these guys.
needs to talk a little bit more before I go crazy. That's that. All right, so we're, we're pretty good along the bottom. We just gotta start working on the contours. I wish I had cut that a little different, but I don't know. Interesting working around that corner in this corner too. Just a little bit of material we can tuck down. Happy with this tucking of the corner. Now I need to like cement all this.
kind of happy with this corner, but we'll see. All of this should be easy enough to do. I'm more concerned with up here, which is also not the end of the world. Ultimately, this corner is going to be the big defining piece of this upholstery. I was thinking suspicion the trick will be to tug it like this and fold it under. And I'm correct. It's probably gonna be the solution right there. So, tug this up in here, and all right, that worked out well. Just kind of press it down, hold it in place, let the cement do its thing. I could definitely see myself shooting a staple into this just to reinforce it, but we'll see. Part of what I need to do with the rest is cut some of this to relieve it. not looking too bad there's some fuzz on it but that'll come off this is complex enough I don't want this on here so the rest of this I gotta kinda like press like that to get the wrinkles out and then bring it over. All right, so tucked up both corners, I've added glue here. Now I really just need to kind of relieve tension up here and kind of work this over. I've got cement up in this section. Well, 
fold that like that. Alright, so now this is nice, it's done, but I need to get rid of that material so that this will fit nicely. Alright, so I did quite a bit of work to get these corners tucked up correctly. I looked at pictures of the factory wrapped ones online on the back, and what I realized is that they tucked the tops of the material in before they did the bottoms, right? So I went around and tucked these tops, you know, I stretched this material as much as I could. I strain relieved it up to the edge beforehand and I stretched it over, right? And got the corners tucked from here like this on top. Then I came in through the back and just folded the corners on the bottom. And this came out much nicer than the other one. If sharp-eyed among you will notice this is the passenger side one not the driver's one um, I finished that one shortly after I ran out of battery on the camera um, so I put that in the car came out looking super nice I'm happy with it there's teeny tiny little defects that you have to really be looking for to find um, and once installed they're really hard to see in the case of this one there's no teeny tiny defects to see it's perfect from this side and um, I'm happy with that. I might rewrap the other one in the future, but for now, I'm probably gonna stick with this. I'm gonna use the leftover Alcantara for some of my steering wheel projects. Speaking of which, my next upholstery related video is gonna be a restoration of this neglected Evo 8 steering wheel that I happened to get my hands on. Now, I fully disassembled this, ripped the old crusty leather off of it. It was coming off in chunks and they were hard and plasticky. It was in that bad of a condition, so, I'm gonna go ahead and completely restore that wheel and it's likely gonna go on my friend Randy's VR4. So keep an eye out for that. Possibly in one of his future videos, you'll see an installation of this steering wheel in a 3000 GT VR4. But in any case, I'm gonna be restoring this. He wants the face to be black, kind of like the Evo 8 wheels. So I'm gonna be painting the aluminum on that black and then I'm going to be doing a whole leather wrap all the way around on this thing and stitching it in black stitching actually so it's not going to be contrasting but it's going to look fantastic and then I'm going to assemble the entire steering wheel obviously and it'll be a whole different ball game when I'm done with it so keep an eye out for that, it's definitely coming up Alright so we've got our upholstered knee pad you'll see there's a couple holes that these two align into that up. And there we go. And that looks so much better than just the crummy plastic that was there before. I'm really happy with that. Makes the interior look so much more plush. It's such a small detail, but it just, it makes such a massive difference and it matched the Alcantara that was already on here, or micro suede, because I don't think this is real Alcantara. This is real Alcantara, though. The difference is very minimal. Feels borderline the same. If you guys have enjoyed this video, want to see more like it, I'm definitely going to be doing more upholstery work. It's one of my side hustles, and it's kind of like a small passion for me. Definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, Feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I post up another one. If you have any comments, feel free to leave that in the comments section. And as always, thank you guys for watching.